Now for the second problem, we have a pipe and then this pipe is um, 15 centimeter in its outer diameter and it has a thickness that is 1.5 centimeter. So let me just draw this first so that we can um, have an idea of how it looks like. And then um, the surface temperature. So this is the thickness. So we have the thickness that is 1.5 centimeter, of course, not the scale. And then we have this um, outer diameter that is equal to 15 centimeter. And then um, the material is lead, which is 99% pure. And then we do have this um, surface temperature. So we have Ds is equal to 400 Kelvin. We also have the air temperature. So because it is exposed to um, air. So the air temperature, so it's surrounding the pipe, that's, let's have it Te, that's equal to 300 Kelvin. And then of course, um, this one is still exposed to radiation. So uh, I know that this is not the right way of drawing this simply because, you know, we can't actually draw this um, um, convection con uh, radiation because they are actually um, you know we don't actually see them but um, just to give you some idea that's how it works and then we have here H that is equal to 26.37 watts per meter squared Kelvin and now we also have the thermal and co thermal conductivity and emissivity which in the problem says that it should be um, evaluated at the surface temperature and considered constant along the temperature. So if I have 300 and 400, I will not be using the film because in the problem it says there that um, it's constant at the surface temperature. So I'll just be taking the surface temperature to evaluate this K and E. And the first, um, it's not actually but epsilon. So the first question here is um, we need to calculate the heat loss per length of pipe accounting all the possible heat transfer mechanisms. So there are just three main heat transfer mechanisms that is that are involved here and we can say that the Q net is equal to the Q of radiation plus the Q of conduction and then we also have the Q of radiation. So let's just I mean convection. Uh, let me just um do something like QC for conduction and then QH for convection. So let's have your convection and then we do have here something like conduction and then this one is radiation. Now let's try to, um, we won't be solving this as if this is a, a straightforward solution. Let's try to chop uh, this all out and then we start with um, the one that we've already done, the QC, which is conduction. So remember, um, conduction employs this Fourier equation, and remember that's Q over A is equal to negative K dt over dx. And if we would employ the area of our pipe, we can say that that's 2 pi RL, knowing that the differential um, radius changes from the center going out of our um, region here. and if we would be, be evaluating that, we know that after evaluation, we can determine the equation for our pipe. And that is equal to K multiplied with 2 pi and then the length of the pipe times the temperature gradient. In this case, that's TS and TE. So I'll just be taking TS minus TE. Then divide all of these by the difference in the radii. So this is the shortcut form of our equation. And now, because we need this K, which is the thermal conductivity in R, to an R1, so let's find them. First, we need to find this K. And remember, I've already told you how K is um, evaluated. So you can check on chapter 2 and then find the value of our K here. So um, let's have a quick look. So we go to the thermal conductivities and we can see here the metals and metals the metal is lead at 400 Kelvin. So we'll be using lead at 400 Kelvin and that's 34 watts per meter Kelvin. So our K 
is equal to 34 watts per meter Kelvin and now we need to find R2 and R1 so we don't have any problem with R2 knowing that it's the outside radius so if the outside diameter is 15 then of course R2 is 7.5 cm that's just a half but if we need to find R1 that's the inner diameter we could see here that it's just R2 minus the thickness and with that subtracting 7.5 by 1.5 centimeter we could see that that's 6 centimeter so in this case we can now substitute the values for our QC to find our heat of conduction so the heat of conduction is equal to 34 that's what per meter Kelvin and then 2 pi and then of course L because we don't have any value that and we actually need the QC over L so TS is 400 Kelvin and then minus 300 Kelvin and then we divide this all by ln of 7.5 divided by 6 so the heat of conduction per unit length so that is actually equal to so the heat of conduction per unit length is equal to 95,735.8163 and that's watts per meter let me just cancel the units out now let's proceed with radiation I mean conduction now let's proceed with convection so let me just use another color and probably the easiest here would be this convection knowing that we do have this formula and we're actually given with H so the area that we will be considering here is the la lateral area so that's by D and then L and then we have H and then TS minus TE so upon substitution we know that this convection heat transfer would be pi and then the diameter is equal to the that this is the outside diameter so that's 15 divided by 100 and that's in meter and then we have the length and then H so H here is um, 26.37 so that's 26.37 watts per meter uh, squared Kelvin and then we need to find the difference in temperature and the difference in temperature would be simply the S minus T so that's 400 Kelvin minus 300 Kelvin so in this case QH would be equal to so QH is equal to 1242.6570 that's watts per meter and this one should be per length so that's pretty easy for our radiation and remember this one became easier because we're given with the value of our H but if not then we have to like consider again the Rayleigh number to find and the Nusselt number just to evaluate it and check on the region of flow if this is turbulent or laminar or in transition but this problem made it easier so we don't have to worry about this H and then lastly we need to find our QR and that is the heat um, given by or lost through radiation so let's have it QR so QR again as what I've written before we used to have this kind of equation if we're given we just um, one emissivity and knowing that in this case we do have um, a constant emissivity through the surface temperature we could say that that's just e a and then e stefan boltzmann constant and then t1 to the fourth raised to t2 minus t2 to the fourth now knowing this knowing the equation that we have here we just need to find we just need to substitute the values for our area that's by dl and then the emissivities and then this um stefan boltzmann constant and then the differences in temperature to the fourth power now the emissivity it the problem doesn't give us the emissivity but we can check on our Paris handbook to find the emissivity and we can go to chapter 5 for this 
and then browse over this heat transfer by radiation and then this emittance and absorbance. You can see here the discussion and once you scroll down further, you can see here the table of normal total emissivity of various surfaces. Now I want you to I want to tell you something about this normal total emissivity. Um, this total emissivity is the answer when you try to like integrate through all the average area of these um, metals. So in this case, um, this is most probably the most accurate, I mean, tables that you will be using. And to check on this, we need the lead at 99%. So the ha we have here the pure or the unoxidized one. So it ranges from 260 to 440. But remember, in the problem, it says here that it's constant at surface temperature, where in our surface temperature is 400 Kelvin. Not this, 260 degrees Fahrenheit. This is in Fahrenheit. So if you convert this to Kelvin, that is around 399.9 something. And that's approximately 400 Kelvin. So I will not be like um, extrapolating from the value since it's very close to 400. So I'll just be taking this, the lower value. So if, for example, the lead is found at around, let's say, 300 um, degrees Fahrenheit. So what you have to do here is to interpolate in between 0 0.057 and 0 0.075. Now the temperature that we'll be using is um, for 260, it's 0 0.057 and point, for 0 0.075, that's 440. So it's like interpolating in um, in a way that this is just given by the range. So you can do that. and But for this case, since it's the lowest temperature, we'll be using 0 0.057. So the emissivity is equal to 0 0.057, and that's unitless. So in this case, that's 0 0.057. I can now substitute all the values, and since this is a radiation, I'll just be using the outside diameter since it is the one exposed, you know, being exposed to the environment. So we have pi, and then the diameter is actually 15. Then we divide that to 100 to get meters, and then we have the length. And then the emissivity is 0 0.054 dimension less. And then we do have this Stefan Boltzmann constant that's 5.6704 times 10 to the negative 8. And then the unit is watt per meter squared and then Kelvin to the fourth. And then we, we do have this T1 to the fourth, the first. Now remember, we need to, I mean, uh, this, we have to raise that to the fourth. So we have 400 Kelvin raised to four and then we have 300 Kelvin raised to fourth so let me just um, delete this so we have to the fourth and then this one is k to the fourth can cancel this out and now we're left with just one m so the radiation is equal to um, by the way um, it should be 0 0.057 okay Correct. So 0 0.057, and with that, the answer is equal to twenty-six point six five four three, and that's watts per meter, and this should be per length. Now, in this case, um, don't forget to like add some parentheses before you multiply this. The temperature raised to fourth power because sometimes students tend to forget the parentheses and they you know forget to get the correct answer by just a simple mathematical error now the question here is actually not the radiation but the whole transfer mechanism total heat loss so in this case for number one we have um q net um let's have another color so therefore our Q net per L would be the sum of all those QC, QR, and then Q um, H divided by L. So with this, we can add all of those. And by adding all of these, I will not be writing it anymore since you can just um, direct that to your calculator. So the answer for this would be 97,000. So that's 97,000, 005. Point one two seven six. So that's watts per meter. So this is the answer for our net Q, and that's a lot of. Um, I mean, energy per length. 
Now, I would also like to give um, an insight about this. And um, the next question would be asking the percent net heat transfer is accounted for radiation. So if we need to find the, the net heat accounted for radiation, we could just take the percent radiation that is equal to the QR over L divided by Q net over L and times 100%. So in this case, since our radiation is 26.6543, and then for our total, we have this. So we already solved that. That's um, 1276. And by multiplying to 100%, the percent radiation would be equal to 0.0275%. That would be equal to 0.0275%. So... Uh, this percent radiation or heat transfer from radiation accounted with respect to the total is just around 0.0275%. So this fraction is very small compared to uh, the whole net radiation and the whole net um, heat transfer. So uh, this implies that um, in problems like this when we actually have... Um, a combined conduction, convection, and then radiation, we could tell most of the time that the, uh, the heat transfer is attributed to conduction itself. Knowing, of course, that we have a metal pipe, and remember, metal pipes are good conductors. So if we have a different, a very different temperature, I mean, large difference in temperature, we could see that the amount of conduction or heat that is given off or lost through conduction is very very large compared to other um, heat transfer mechanisms but I would also like to emphasize that during solving if the problem doesn't ask you whether it's conduction convection or radiation always take the assumption of um, the problem asks for all the heat transfer mechanisms so even though this radiation and convection are just small you should still incorporate that because the problem doesn't tell you that you can neglect those the effects of those um, heat and but if but if the problem I mean of course the problem would have given but if there's just no way that you can find it through just the given then you're, you're not allowed to like add some given just to you know solve for it if it's not written there about the for example it doesn't have any heat transfer convective heat transfer coefficient and it's almost impossible for you to find it using just your Paris handbook. Then don't force yourself, just neglect it. But um, in this problem, if you would notice the other uh, relationship between the convection and conduction, it's just it's almost as if uh, just what more than 1% of this is from convection. So, in any way, there are still cases when radiation will will persevere other than conduction because as we have mentioned before con radiation exists in a way that it doesn't require any medium so if we're trying to find trying to find like the radiation between two objects and then they are not actually in contact so radiation would happen with that but conduction would be zero so that's all for this problem and let's proceed with the next